So occasionally I'll see people ask things like, how do I do things like unarchive files in LF? And the thing you need to remember about LF, unlike Ranger, is that a lot of these things that you want to do with it aren't going to be built into it by default and you need to actually integrate them into it yourself. Now, it's actually really easy to do this. So what I'm gonna to do today is actually show you what I've integrated into LF and basically some of the things you need to keep in mind when you do that yourself. So if you're new to the channel, you know what to do and let's jump right into it. So the first thing I'd like to show you is that there's actually a GitHub page that talks about some of the little things you can integrate in. There's obviously gonna be a lot more that you can do, but this is the stuff that's actually documented on the actual GitHub page. So there's a bit of stuff in here about integrating Trash CLI, which I've done myself. So if you don't know what Trash CLI is, I'm gonna do a dedicated video on it, but basically it's a way to actually have a trash can on Linux, pretty much, like you would have had on something like Windows or Mac OS, so that when you delete something, it doesn't instantly just get deleted, it actually goes somewhere until you delete it again, basically. There's also one for auto jump, so that's to jump to a directory. I've got my own method to do this, I just use CDs because, you know, that just makes more sense. There's one for FCF, which I, I'm not using right now, but I've got a slightly modified version of it, and I'll show you what mine is. And I do actually have this one written in my configs, I'm just not actually using it. So you can use FCF to jump around or open up files, whatever you want to do with FCF, basically. There's an integration here for Vim and NeoVim. There's another one for copies. So what this one will do will basically let you show a progress bar when you're copying or moving files. Now, most of the time, the files you're going to move around are going to be very small. So usually it's just doesn't make any sense to include it. If you want to, maybe you actually do move around really big files a lot. Maybe you do want to use this, but for me, I think it just gets in the way. There's another one for like archive mounting, so you can browse archives like directories. That's kind of a cool one. I might integrate that one a bit later, but for now I don't have it. And then there's one for like ZSH file picker, and there's a couple more in here. No, I think that that's actually all of it. Okay, there's not a couple more, I lied. <laughs> so, so let's just have a look at my LFRC, and we can have more of a look at what I'm actually doing then. So, let's see, LFRC. So, the first thing I've got in here, it's not too important, it's just my opener function. I'm not really gonna go into this. This is just handling cases where, basically, XDG open isn't going to work properly because sometimes we've got programs like for my editor where it's gonna to try to open up another terminal and then NVim, whereas I want the editor to just open up within my current terminal, so that's why I'm handling that differently. And the rest of this stuff, not really too important. So let's just have a look at some of the more interesting integrations. So this first one I've got in here is for make dir. So basically, if I just bring up LF, I'll show you what it looks like as we're going through it. So LF, I've got M and then D. This will basically bring me up to a prompt to give me a directory name. Now, there's a couple of different ways you go about doing this. You could have this actually built into your actual LF screen. I'll show you how you would do that in just a moment but I prefer it like this anyway. So basically all I'm doing is asking for a directory name and then making a directory using the make dir command like that. So say I wanna make a directory called like test or something. Now if I search for that, now we have this test directory. So I was testing that off camera as well. That's why that other directory was there. So as you can see, for just basic stuff like this, it's really easy to integrate it into LF. Now I'm gonna get into more complicated ideas a bit later, but for now, this is just how you do it for the very basic stuff like making a directory, making a new file, things like that. Now, one thing that you might want to keep in mind is there's actually two ways to define commands. So you've got this dollar sign and then the double curly braces on either side, but you've also got this method right here. So make the, and then instead of doing this right here, we use a percentage sign. So let's just test this out with just an echo and see what that does. So if I just comment this one out, Basically what this one's going to do, so this original one, it would open up back in your terminal. If you just use the percentage sign, instead of doing that, it's actually gonna output onto that line at the bottom of LF here. So if we go MD, as we can see, it outputs to this line right at the bottom. I'll run that again so you have a better look. There you go. So for certain things, it might be fine to use this down here. So I could probably change this version to actually just use that line down the bottom, and I might do that, just so it looks a little bit neater. But there's going to be other ones where you really don't want to do that. So for example, if you try to use Fuzzy Finder, what it's going to do is try to output every single line to that single line right there, and you're only going to see, I think you're only going to see the prompt in the end. And that's not really a, a useful way to use Fuzzy Finder. So you have to definitely keep that in mind when you are trying to integrate stuff into LF. So as I said, we have another one here. So we have one for make file. So this does the same thing as 
make directory basically except it makes a file instead. A very recent addition is I've integrated Chamod into LF. So what I occasionally want to do is I'll make a file and I realize, oh, this is supposed to be a script. So instead of then going out of LF, doing Chamod plus X to that file, I can then instead do it like this. So let's just try that out. So if we go make file, I don't know, call it test file. Save that as it is, we don't need anything in here. Go down to test file. And now if I press C, I believe I've got it bound to CH. Then it brings me back to this window so I can do plus X. Now, as I said, like with the make file and make directory, I could also integrate this into the other method so it just uses that line at the bottom. Because I'm just outputting one thing, it'll probably be fine just to do it like that. So I run that. Now we just have to refresh and as we can see, this is now a script file. So since it's highlighted green, that means it's a script file in LF basically. I don't know if there's a way to change that. There might be, that's not too important to this video though. Occasionally I'll need to make files as the root user. So I've just got a pseudo make file version of that. There's nothing too special about that. And this next one is for setting my wallpaper. So this is something that I've had since way back when I was using range and I pinched this one from Luke Smith. Basically all it did was basically copied the selected file I had and then moved it into like my config directory and then set that as my wallpaper with fair. So I can just show you what that looks like actually. So if we just bring up LF, go into my wallpapers folder and I'm just gonna pick something completely random. Like let's, what's this one? Yeah, let's use that one. BG, and now if we go to a new screen, there we go, I have new wallpaper now. So I think that's a really easy method just to set your wallpaper because you don't really wanna write out a fair command, do you? It's like, it's really easy, but I don't want to do it. And if you're going to use the exact same command every single time, so for me, it's just always BG scale and then no fair BG. I don't want to write that out. If I can just set that within my file manager, I'm going to do that. It just makes it a little bit easier. Now I did mention this fuzzy finder and brute thing earlier. So I'll show you what that's actually doing just so you have a sort of an idea of how that works. So if we press F, this will bring up my fuzzy finder. As I said, I'm not using FZF for this. I'm actually using brute. So if we go like repos and then say book menu, uh, then I can press alt enter here. So that's one of the bindings in brute so that you can then quit out and CD into that directory. So I press alt enter and now I've actually CD'd into my book menu folder in my repos folder basically. So that just makes it a bit easier to move around the file system. I do have um, CD bindings to move around, but occasionally there'll be folders that I haven't actually set up to be CD'd into. I might replace the CDs with a fuzzy finder in entirely, or I might replace it with book menu or something. I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do with that. So the brute version that I'm running here is pretty much the exact same as the FCF version. But instead of doing a depth limited search, I'm just running brute as it is. That's pretty much the only difference. Everything else works exactly the same way. The rest of the command is identical, I believe, except for the fact that in the actual part where I'm getting the path, I'm also stripping off the CD part of the brute command. And that's just because the way that brute works is when you actually output a path, it'll also output it with CD, which sometimes I don't want it to be CD. Sometimes I want to use select instead. So I've just got to strip that off so then I can define the command myself. But if you always just want to do a CD, then this part is kind of redundant and then you can just remove this if statement and then it'll just work as you would expect it to basically. So I did show you the brute version of that. I might as well just show you what the FCF version looks like as well. So if I just bring, actually no, I need to change the command over. So if we go down to where I'm actually defining my command, change that from brute jump into FCF jump. Now, if I go back over to LF, now if I press F, as we can see, this is now using FCF instead of using brute. So this worked exactly the same way. So I can go to like repos, ST, jump in that, and it works exactly the same way that the other one did. I just prefer brute because it, it's usually a little bit quicker than fuzzy finder is. Plus I'm not forced to do a depth limited search the problem with Fuzzy Finder is it tries to dig through your entire file system at the start, whereas Brute only does it layer by layer, so it's a little bit quicker overall. But I don't know, it, it's gonna depend on how you wanna use it pretty much. The next one in here is actually a very, very new one. So I've talked about book menu before. There's a new option here that you probably wouldn't have seen. I'm not sure when that video is gonna go up. Basically, it will let me actually output the path from book menu. But what this will do is similar to how you saw me at the start where I jumped into my configs from a D menu, I can now jump in from a fuzzy finder and I can actually integrate that 
into a program like LF. So if I press something like C, I believe I've got it bound to. Uh, no, it's O actually, my bad. If I press O, this will now bring up a fuzzy finder prompt with all of my config files. So if I wanted to go to something like the, I don't know, the Dunst config, type that in. And as we can see, that'll then just jump me into where I want it to be. And then if we quit out of this one, it will just take me back to the exact folder that I was in before because I'm not actually CDing anywhere. All I'm doing is just opening up that file within a Vim buffer. Now, this is where another problem actually comes up. So LF doesn't really like you opening up programs within a script. I'll show you what happens, but it's a very, it's not great what happens basically. So this time, instead of opening a command directly with an LF, we're opening it from the actual script. So we'll see what happens with this one, but LF, I'm not sure why, it kind of breaks if you open up programs within a script that are gonna stay there. So let's just see what that actually does. Now let's just bring up anything. So NeoFetch, let's see if it's actually gonna do it. And it just broke already. There we go. Now I'm gonna quit out of that before that breaks really horribly, but you should have got a rough idea. As soon as I tried to actually go into the part where I could edit the file from the Netro window, everything just died. And then it started trying to put the folders over top of folders. I don't know why that happens. I've never been able to work it out. It seems like it's just a weird problem with the way that LF is written. But if I'm doing it like this, or I'm actually outputting the path, then it works safely. So that's another thing you do need to keep in mind when you are actually writing stuff with LF. Make sure you're not opening up things like your editor within a script. Open them up directly within LF, otherwise stuff will break. So if you are still unsure about how to actually unarchive files within LF, all I'm doing to do that is I've got this handler function that will use a case statement to work out what sort of unarchiving method that it should be using. So if it's a zip file, it's gonna use unzip. If it's a tar gz, it's gonna use tar with these options, tar bz2, so on and so forth. So if you wanna support more unarchiving methods, so say you wanted to use like, I don't know, uh, unra or something, you could do like unra, I think that's what the program's called for, um, actually unarchiving RAR files. You're probably not gonna run into them on Linux, but if for whatever reason you, you do need to actually unra stuff, then I think this is how you would do it. Obviously you'll need to actually have unra installed or whatever the program is called, but that's, that's all you have to do if you wanna support more methods. Now, I prefer having it all in one handler function just because it's a bit easier than having a binding for zips and a binding for tars and a binding for tar bz2s. It's easier for me just to have them all in one thing. Now, I do have separate commands for all of the different archiving methods I do want to support to actually make archives though, just because there's no easy way to make a handler function for that. So basically all I'm doing is I'm using the command format we saw before, so the percent sign, because this time we're not actually outputting anything onto the terminal, so it doesn't really matter. And basically we're running the command with whatever options we need, then we're passing the name of the file and the basically the output path. Now obviously it's gonna depend on which program you use for how you actually write this. Look at the actual documentation for the archive utilities and you'll work it out pretty quickly. It's really easy to work out how to actually do that. And lastly, I've got the trash CLI bindings. Now, I've got spaces in a couple of my file names, which kind of makes it very difficult to make this actually play nicely with anything. Because if you don't do base name, if you then quote the entire path, it doesn't work. If you quote that part of the path, I haven't managed to get that to work. If you then quote this, it will then treat everything as one line, and if you don't quote it, then it treats the lines with spaces as multiple lines. So I'm not really sure what the fix for this is, besides obviously just removing the spaces, and I probably should do that. So if you don't have any spaces in your file names, there's a much easier way to write this, so just trash all of this, you don't need that. Don't need this either, and you don't need this part. So if you do it like this, then you'll be able to actually, I guess, delete multiple files at once. So if we just test this out, so K and K2, I go in here, go down to K2. Now, if we select both of these, now if we delete that, both of them get deleted just fine. Now, they're not actually deleted, they're actually just sent to the trash bin, so you can go and recover them. But, say this file with a space right here, this doesn't play nicely with trash CLI, or it doesn't play nicely in a way that I've managed to get it to work. So, if someone knows a way so that you can actually loop over the files without that actually breaking the loop, and then actually delete the file without actually then breaking trash CLI, that would be lovely, but for now, I just need to kind of work around it. I'm fine deleting one file at a time for now, I just need to 
work on a way to actually get that properly working. So Trash Empty isn't too interesting. That kind of works exactly as you'd expect it to. But Trash Restore is a little bit different. So Trash Restore, it'll actually bring up a prompt that'll let you select all the files that you want to restore. So you might be wondering why I've got it written out like this instead of, for example, like this, where it's on just one line with the percentage sign instead. So I'll just show you what both of those look like and you'll actually see why I've got it set up like this. So if I press... Uh, TR, I believe, yes. TR will bring up Restore Trash. So as we can see, if you ran Restore Trash just from your normal terminal, this is how it would look as well. So there's nothing too special about this, it just looks like Restore Trash does. Now, I'm not sure how to quit out of this, do I just go quit or something? Yes, okay. So instead of doing that, let's actually run it on a single line and you'll see why I've got it set up the way I do. And this gives a really good example of why you should be really careful when you're actually using this format because it might just break in ways you're not really understanding if you didn't know it was actually a possibility for it to break like that, basically. So if we press TR, I'll just move my webcam over so you can see what it does. So TR. As I was saying before, it's going to try to output every single line in this one section down here, and then it will give you the prompt saying, hey, what files do you want to restore? The problem though, is now you have no idea what the files are. So you have to actually do it in this other format where it brings you back to your terminal. So just keep that in mind when you're doing things like fuzzy finding or you're using trash restore or anything that's going to try to take up your entire terminal. Anything like that, you should probably do it in this format. Otherwise it's probably going to break. The last thing I should just briefly mention is how to actually map these commands to actual key bindings. It's very easy. All you do is you write map the keys you want to bind it to. So for example, for zip right here, I've got it bound to AZ and then the command you want to run. There's literally nothing special about it. I don't know why I've got this one written like this. That's optional. So you can either do it with the, the colon there or without the colon. So I just leave the colon out because it doesn't really matter. And then if you're running anything directly from a map like this, if you're running a command from your actual terminal, you then just put a dollar sign at the front like you would normally do if you're doing something like, for example, this, basically. So you just leave out the brackets, write dollar and then say editor, like I've got for this command right here. So map EE to dollar sign and then editor and then what I want to pass into it. So there's nothing too special about that. That's why I didn't really want to spend too much time on mapping because it's really easy. The other thing you do need to keep in mind with mapping though is that if there's any default key bindings you do want to actually get rid of, make sure you bind them to nothing first and then rebind them because otherwise it's going to try to use the original bindings instead of actually letting you override them. I'm not sure why it does that, but if you just bind them to nothing and then rebind them later, it will work perfectly fine. It might have been fixed in the newer version, but at least when I originally downloaded LF, you had to do that. So I just haven't removed it since then, pretty much. So as you can see, it's actually really, really easy to integrate programs into LF. All you have to do is know a little bit of shell scripting, and then basically it just flows from there. There's nothing too complicated about it. All you need is just your basic shell scripting knowledge, and then you're good to go. So if you like this video, remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. So if you want to see more videos like this, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm now aiming for 10,000 subs and any help would be really appreciated. Up on that corner, I've got the playlist this video's in. So go check that out if you want to see other videos like this. Down below, I've got my social links, so my Discord and my Telegram. So feel free to check any of those out. I've also got my support links, so go check out my Patreon and all of that stuff if you want to donate to the channel. Obviously, though, if you don't want to do it, then you don't have to, but any help will be really appreciated. And lastly, I've got my alternate video platform, so my library and my BitTube. So if you want to see my videos on a platform that isn't YouTube, feel free to use either of those. So I think that's pretty much everything for me now, and I'm out.